Hi, this is Donna Gates, and welcome once again to Body Ecology Bites, where I'm giving you little bits of information so that you can go step by step toward a happier, healthier life. And I wanted to talk today about our culture starter because um, we use it in cultured vegetables. Now, uh, you probably heard of sauerkraut and kimchi because they're talked about a lot and kimchi's have been in the news a lot lately, but I don't like to use the term sauerkraut because it really just refers to cabbage that's been fermented. So we've used the term forever, cultured vegetables. And that's why the starter is called culture starter. In the culture starter, we have a bacteria called plantarum, lactobacillus plantarum. So it's a lactobacillus bacteria. And the lactobacillus plantarum is a super organism. It's one of the, you know, you might think about all these microbes that live in your gut, the trillions and trillions of them that live in a tiny little, tiny little centimeter of the gut. And how do they know what to do? Well, some of the organisms in there are super leaders and plantarum is one of those super leaders. It produces folate. If you have plantarum, then you, you're degrading the histamine and digesting, and that's a big deal. You're far less likely to have allergic reactions to food. It eats oxalates, it's antiviral. And most of the antibiotics on the market do not kill plantarum. So if you have to take an antibiotic or if your child does, and you or he or she have been eating the fermented vegetables or drinking the juice from the veggies, then you're gonna, they'll be left in the gut and you won't get that overgrowth of yeast that taking antibiotics can cause. Now, um, anyway, so there's a lot of myths out there too. First, the biggest myth of all is that all fermented foods are just alike and they're not at all. There's a big difference between vegetables that are fermented with a specific culture. In other words, we know exactly what bacteria are going in there and you're choosing to ferment with these bacteria versus wild fermentation where bacteria from the air, particularly wild yeast, are uh, inoculating, you know, and fermenting that, like kombucha is an example of that, beer and wine is an example of well fermentation. So this is a completely different type of fermentation. But you do not have to have starter in your fermented vegetables. But what I did mention is all the benefits, you know. So you don't have to put them in your uh, cultured vegetables all. And it's just, just that when you do, they grow out into truly, you know, trillions of times more of them. Now, plantarum is actually present on plants, that's where its name comes from. And, and, and if you bring, if you go out in the, in the fields and you grab yourself, let's say cabbage and kale or whatever plants you want to ferment, you bring them in, that head of cabbage has plantarum already growing on it, but now you're bringing it in, shredding it up, packing it in the jar, and the amounts, the plantarum are gonna grow uh, in number. For every little tiny CFU uh, in the gut, there was like, you know, one billion the microbes. But when you added the plantarum, it was more than five times that amount. So greatly increased in number, but also every other bacteria in the whole entire group, <laughs> they increased in number two. So that just shows you that plantarum is like a leader. So it's helping all those other ones grow, organizing a culture, within those fermented vegetables that you just made to make sure that all the other bacteria grow up too. I put things into our, uh, besides the starter culture, I also put other things into our vegetables. I add our humic minerals because the microbes love them and that feeds them and helps them grow. And I also put in Echo Bloom, which is a prebiotic inulin. It helps, um, it's an, a prebiotic means it feeds the bacteria, gives them more to eat. So if they have more to eat, they're gonna grow in number. Uh, just like, you know, we have a lot of food in the world right now. Look at the population. But if we were having a huge famine, there would not be this enormous number of people on the planet right now. So exactly the same with them. So you can feed your microbes. You don't have to, but it's just a, something I like to do, especially especially with the um, humic minerals. Really interesting to me that by adding the, the starter, the plantarum, who's the leader, is going to grow and tell the other ones then how to grow in numbers. And so it's going to be perfectly balanced anyway. I would rather see people ferment um, three, four vegetables, maybe cabbage and carrots and onion and garlic or uh, cabbage and kale, fennel, throw in some apples into there. You know, there's just lots and lots and lots of wonderful, delicious combinations. Carrots and daikon, just carrots by themselves. They're not sauerkraut per se. So we've used the term forever, cultured vegetables.